What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on social media, Twitter, TikTok, the community post, man, any way you can get up with me. You already know the vibes, and I'm back at you with your SmackDown review. And this is an overall fun show, man, the first SmackDown since Survivor Series War Games. Man, what a show it was, man, you already know the rundown, you already know... WWE's been promoting it, you know, CM Punk made his return, Randy Orton's back, um, the both war games matches were dope, man, the men's war games was dope, the women's war games was dope, and SmackDown tonight kicked off with Bianca Belair in the ring, talking about, you know, how she and her team won the war games match, and now she's moving on to getting that championship back, she wants EO Sky one more time for the smackdown women's championship or the wwe women's what whatever it's called I, I forget sometimes but she wants eo sky and this causes damage control to come out and they're like listen if you want to get to the championship you got to go through all of us and damage control was out there they were looking strong they were looking good but there was somebody missing bailey wasn't out there so after this segment, you know, you cut to backstage. Bailey was like, yo, man, I would have had your guys' back, man. You got into a fight with Charlotte and um, Shotzi and Bianca. I would have been out there, man, if I would have known what was going on. They're like, listen, man, it's not about that. It's all about, you know, helping out Kyrie in the main event against Bianca tonight. But, you know, that wasn't really the case because you cut to the main event. And, you know, damage control, they're getting ready. You know, they're getting hyped. You know, they're getting turned up. And he was going in Bailey's face and was like, listen, you got to stay in the back, man. You don't come out here with us. And I kind of feel bad for for, um, for Bailey, man. They're doing a good job of building up that sympathy for Bailey, you know, making her look like a sympathetic figure, you know. Even though she's like the biggest jerk out of the group, you know what I mean? Bailey was low-key the one in the women's war game match that, you know, was holding it down for damage control, you know, breaking up pin covers and breaking up submissions and trying her absolute best to make sure that damage control could actually win the match even though they lost. And the reason that they lost was because Bailey was the one that got the pin. So it's not looking too good for Bailey. So now we get to the main event, Kyrie versus Bianca. And they've had good matches in the past. This wasn't all that good. It wasn't one of their best matches, but it, it was an all right match. You know, for what it was worth, it was kind of short. You had the shenanigans. You had the outside interference from Damage Control and Charlotte and um, Shotzi. And the referee kicking everybody out. Like, all oh, y'all got to go. All, all y'all gets to step and get to the back. So they all go to the back. But Bailey comes out. And she, you know, while the referee's distracted, she attacks Bianca. And it looks like um, it looks like Kyrie is going to get the win with the insane elbow. But, you know, Bianca's like, nah, nah, that ain't happening. She reverses it, gets the KOD. One, two, three. And it's still not looking too good for Bailey, man. Even though she, she tries and she tries and she tries. And she has the best intentions in the world of helping out damage control and being for the group. The group ain't ruling for Bailey, and it's only a matter of time now before she gets the boot, before she gets the beast, before she gets kicked out of the group that she helped create. You know what I'm saying? So, <sighs> I'm sorry, Bailey. The first match of the night was Bobby Lashley taking on Butch, my guy Butch. And, you know, speaking of people coming out without their squad, you know what I'm saying? Butch came out here without Sheamus, who's injured, so, you know, it is what it is. But more importantly, he came out without Ridge Holland, you know. Old Butch and Ridge, they haven't really been seeing either of these past couple weeks. So, Butch is coming out solo, taking on Bobby Lashley, who's out there with the Street Profits. And, you know... This, this this episode of SmackDown took place in Brooklyn, and Brooklyn was really up for Bobby Lashley. They're chanting for him. They're chanting Bobby. You know, Bobby Lashley's whooping Butch's ass. He's hitting him with spine busters. They're chanting. They're saying one more time and all that. And I'm like, damn, poor Butch. But, you know, it's not really that they were so much against Butch, but they were just really, 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 really for Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley ended up getting the win with a really nasty, badass spear that flipped him in half. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 
Cause after the match, you know, Bush is being interviewed. He's being asked about Ridge Highland. He's like, oh, man, that really doesn't matter, man. I'll just do this by myself. It don't matter. And then he's approached by Pretty Deadly. Yes, boy. And they just start putting the beat down to this man. They start whooping Butch's ass. And I'm like, damn, Butch needs some friends. But the whole time I'm thinking, like, yo, man, they need to, to bring up Tyler Bate. You know, this will be the perfect opportunity. Tyler Bate's been in NXT for the longest time, since, like, 1965. He's not really doing anything. And the last time Butch was in NXT, which was, like, what, a few weeks ago, he actually teamed up with Tyler Bate. And, you know, they still look good. They still look great. You know what I mean? So... If Butch and, you know, Pete or, or um, Rich Holland are kind of separating and Sheamus is out of the picture and Butch is getting beat up by Pretty Deadly, bring up Tyler Bate, man. He ain't doing nothing, man. Just, just do it, man, please, for me. Triple H and Shawn Michaels or Nick Khan or whoever is watching this, man. Whoever keeps copyrighting my videos, man. Just do it, man. Bring up bring up Tyler Bate, man. I need it, man, please. So after this, we have Santos Escobar taking on Joaquin while representing the LWO. And, you know, this heel run from Santos Escobar, man, is continuing to heat up, man. I'm really digging it. Santos Escobar ended up getting the win to the surprise of absolutely nobody. And then after the match, you know, Santos started beating up Joaquin. And then Dragon Lee came out and made the save. And Brooklyn really went up for him. Dragon Lee, man, they're chanting for him. They're cheering for him. He got a Dragon Lee chant. And, you know, he started beating up Santos while wearing a mask and a turtleneck, you know. The Riz is there. The sauce is there. The drip is already there, man. It's looking really good for Dragon Lee. So after this, we have Logan Paul making his return to the WWE for his return to SmackDown for the first time as the new United States champion. And he's out there, you know, he's drinking in all the booze. He's being a heel. He's being a total dickhead to the people. And, you know... He announces a tournament to determine who will be the new number one contender. And he had a whole bunch of names in there. You had Santos and Kevin Owens and A Town Down Unders in there. And Karrion Cross, a while Karrion Cross appeared. And I'm like, yo, he still works for WWE. Cool, good for him. And then Kevin Owens came out. And he talked he starts talking trash to Logan Paul. And he says that, you know, seeing Logan Paul he's the United States champion absolutely makes him sick. And once he wins the whole tournament, you know, he's going to become the United States champion one more time. But then out of nowhere, A-Town Down Under comes out and they start talking trash. And Austin Theory is talking trash. And he talks about how, you know, Kevin Owens is in the ring with Logan Paul. And, Lo and Kevin Owens is the only person that can knock somebody out. And as he's talking, Kevin Owens punches him in the face again. And this leads us to our match with Kevin Owens and Grayson Waller. And you have um, Austin Theory on commentary. And, you know, the referee's distracted. Um, I think it was Grayson Waller um, messes up Kevin Owens' hand. And, you know, he's selling the fact that his hand is hurt, possibly broken. But, you know, Kevin Owens, he's, he's the great man. He's the GOAT man, one of the best to do it. He ends up getting the win. And I'm pretty sure Kevin Owens is going to be the one that wins the whole tournament. And this is going to lead us into lead us to Kevin Owens versus... Logan Paul possibly at the Royal Rumble or, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing at WrestleMania, but I have a feeling that it's going to be Logan Paul versus LA Knight at WrestleMania. You heard it here first. But one thing of note in this tournament was you have all these names in this tournament, but you have a surprise NXT call up, I guess. I don't know if he's going to be called up. But he's going to be a part of the tournament. And people started speculating whether it's going to be Axiom or um, Carmella Hayes, maybe Trick Williams, Dijak, Braun Breaker. It could be anybody, man. So I'm excited to see who the call is going to be. And they even match announced you know, some of the matches for next week. I think it's going to be Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross, And uh, Santos Escobar taking on Dragon Lee. So, you know. I'm here for it, man. After this, we get the announcement that CM Punk is going to be on SmackDown next week. 
they showcased again you know his moment his viral moment and it's gonna be cool to see cm punk back on smackdown and you know maybe there'll be some interaction with, between him and paul Heyman. and speaking of paul Heyman, he's up in nick aldis's office and he's, he has some questions he has some concerns he's like hey bro who, who told you to let randy orton up on the tribal chief snow on smackdown and nick aldis lets know that the tribal chief doesn't run smackdown paul Heyman doesn't run smackdown nick aldis does and you know at the end of the night it's gonna be a contract signing and he's gonna sign him to smackdown but but um adam pierce is like hold on i'm gonna be a player i'm trying to get him my back on monday night raw so this leads us into the main event segment the big building war the big contract signing between um who can sign randy orton is the great bidding war of 2023 for the services of randy orton and it's great to see randy orton back on friday night smackdown he came out to a big pop you know he's hitting the post and everyone was loving it they were cheering for it they were saying hooray randy orton is back and you know before randy orton can even make his chance to make his pitch to make his choice paul Heyman comes out and says listen bro you don't want to do this man the bloodline heart has already made their ch your choice for you just go ahead and just be back on monday night raw it's safe for you you don't want these problems and then Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso come out and they start putting the beat down on Randy Orton and then out of nowhere LA Knight comes out and makes the save he's beating up on uh, Solo Sokoa they fight to the back and then this leaves Jimmy Uso in the ring alone all by him so awesome with Randy Orton and Randy Orton already hits him with that draping DDT he drops him with an RKO and Randy Orton's like listen I'm coming to Smackdown and Paul Hammond, you can tell your tribal chief that daddy is back. So Randy Orton is officially signed to SmackDown. He's all SmackDown. <laughs> He's a part of the SmackDown roster. And I'm pretty sure this is leading to, you know, Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Even though this is like a couple months away, it doesn't, well, not even a couple months away, it's like next month. But you know, I'm here for it. Randy Orton, Roman Reigns. Let's go. Randy Orton back on SmackDown. Let's go. So, man, that's SmackDown. It gets the honorary W, man. It was an overall fun show. It was enjoyable. You had um, the whole stuff with damage control and the bloodline and Randy Orton and the big contract signing and whatever. Overall fun show, but let me know you guys thoughts in the comment section below Did you enjoy this week's episode of Smackdown? Are you excited to see Randy Orton back on the blue brand? Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, as always like comment and subscribe. You guys take care. Be easy. I'm out Peace